In this video, I want to explore the symbolism that's found in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3, and how it relates to Christianity and Catholicism and the New Testament. Now, most of you probably know the story of the Garden of Eden, uh, where Eve eats from the tree of life, eats the apple after being tempted by the serpent and gives it to Adam, after which they can now see the difference between evil and good and notice that they're naked. So when God comes along, he knows that they've eaten from the tree of life. They've broken the one commandment that God gave them in the Garden of Eden. So they need to be punished. So in the punishment, everybody gets punished, including the serpent. And what's this punishment for the serpent? Well, he loses his legs, and now he will crawl along the earth, along his belly for eternity, eating dust. That's specifically what it says, he will eat the dust. And keep that in mind, because it's interesting when it relates to Adam. Now, when Eve gets punished, she gets punished with labor pains. Uh, having a child is, is going to give her tremendous pain. And when Adam gets punished, he gets punished with a couple different things. The first is, you'll see at the end of Genesis chapter 3, that God says, from dust you came, so dust shall you return. So when it comes back to the serpent, notice that the serpent is eating the dust or the souls of men. He will eat the dust of men for those who die because Adam is going to die. And that's basically what his punishment was. You are now mortal. From dust you came, for, uh, from dust you shall return. And in the last paragraph, God talks about eating the apple or eating from the tree of life makes him and Eve like God, actually says like us, and that eating made them immortal and the, seeing the difference of good and evil. So their second punishment is they are kicked out of the Garden of Eden and the soil that Adam is going to have to work to try and get food from is going to be tremendously difficult to, to bear fruit. Uh, it's going to be thorny and it's going to be um, just a terrible time to get it to harvest. He's going to toil all the days of your life until you die. So that's their punishment and it is presumed that Eve went with them. They were kicked out. St staying on the last paragraph of the Garden of Eden, notice that the very last line says that God put a flaming sword that moves and cherubim, angels, to guard not the Garden of Eden. Notice it does not say the Garden of Eden. It says to guard the way to the tree of life. And that's key because the tree of life bringing immortality, you may get the symbolism here um, that's going to relate to Jesus and the Eucharist in John chapter 6, uh, when you, if you eat my blood and, or drink my blood and eat my flesh, you will receive eternal life. So before I get into that, just notice that eating the tree of life gives your immortality, but God is going to guard that immortality with angels and a flaming sword. Lastly, on the Garden of Eden, notice which direction did Adam and Eve go? They were sent east. And those of you who know your Bible know that that wasn't the only time God punished the Jews. When Babylonians came in to conquer, the prophets, such as Jeremiah, said it was because of sin and God was angry with the Israelites. And Babylon came in and conquered them and took them into captivity. Seventy years of captivity. Daniel calls the 70 years for Jerusalem the 70 years of desolation. And which way did they go? They went east to Babylon. So see that, uh, notice that those two things coming. Because when we go into the New Testament... 
Where did the wise men come from? They came from the east. And what were they following? They were following a star or a movable star or a flaming sword, perhaps. In Luke's uh, birth narrative, it says that the angels came to see the shepherds. So here you have your cherubim, and they were telling the shepherds, go. They don't say tree of life, but you should see the symbolism now. Go see the newborn king. Now we know the star was moving through the three wise men in Matthew's gospel because they went to Jerusalem first before heading to Bethlehem. So, and you have to imagine that the trip from wherever they came, most people want to believe it was Persia. They were astronomers from Persia. You have to assume that that probably took a while to get to Jerusalem. And the, as you know, the, the stars were probably moving. The earth was moving. And so you could see symbolic reference to a flaming sword in the birth narratives. In addition to that, notice that for 2,000 years, scholars and uh, Christian fathers or have called Mary the New Eve. That's a second century Ignatius calling her the New Eve. And then Paul writes to the Corinthians, first letter of the Corinthians, chapter 15, uh, I believe it's first tw verse 22, uh, maybe it's 27, calls Jesus, the new Adam, or the last Adam. So when I say, when I call Adam and Eve, or Mary and Jesus, the new Adam and Eve, I hope you realize that this isn't coming, this isn't something I made up. That is well established that people have called Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and Eve. In addition to these, think of the whole Adam and Eve story. You had Adam uh, made Eve from his rib, and then from Eve's rib or stomach, shall we say, came Jesus. You could even go into thinking about the apple. It was ingested into Mary's stomach. And what came, what sin into the stomach, what came from Mary's stomach, came the redeemer of sin. Uh, so there's a bunch of those that go back. And I'm not going to go into all those. Um, I talk about them in my course. But uh, Irenaeus went pretty specifically into all that um, symbolism between Mary and Eve and calling her the woman in John and Revelation and all that jazz. So anyway, see that. And then notice also that Jesus is crucified on a tree. And in John chapter six, he is called, he calls himself the bread of life for which eternal life can be given to those who eat his uh, flesh and drink his blood. That would be John 6, 55. He also adds to this, you know, making sure there's no, no one going to change his words and call it a symbol. He says, no, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. It's not a symbol. That's uh, John chapter 6, 57. And again, you might know that that's when a lot of his disciples started turning against him because eating uh, blood and flesh, that, that's completely against the law uh, for Jews to do. So that was a really tough one uh, for people to swallow. They didn't get uh, what it meant, and certainly it, it gave to Eucharist, giving in the, the Last Supper. Uh, the disciples would know that. So Jesus is the tree of life that is talked about in Genesis chapter 3. I hope uh, you've enjoyed this video. Um, again, I always say this, but uh, if I, I have a whole course on Udemy. If you're interested in this type of thing, feel free to check out that course uh, on Udemy. But thank you for watching.